Hey everyone, welcome back to the vlog. In this video, we're gonna be talking about cricket viruses and it's gonna be number 35, so it's probably taken us a while to get here, but the reason why it's taken us a while to get here is because we actually haven't had too many viruses or little issues with crickets just dying out of the blue. So we're gonna run you through a few things today, but firstly, before we do, get into the video. Um, for those who don't know, we do have a bit of a dry land farm as well with our cricket farm. That's where we get all our food from. And just something that's been pretty interesting in the last, I don't know, half of the year. We've only had around about 60 mils. And in the last six days, we've had 30 of those. So a lot of the farmers are gonna be pretty happy in our area, um, and especially the bugs, because that's where they get all the food from. So. Yeah, um, it's exciting. Let's get into the video to talk about cricket viruses. Quickly before we get to the video, thank you for uh, the recent support on the channel and also on the other social media platforms. Uh, everyone's been really supportive and providing a lot of feedback and comments about what we're doing with cricket farming and also a lot of questions. I try to make sure I answer all the questions so thank you for everyone who has been subscribing and supporting the channel but then of course um, just the overall engagement from everyone on the channel and across all the social media platforms it's been awesome and we really appreciate it so let's get into it okay i've just come inside our brand new container that we've set up you would have seen on the channel recently uh, a little bit of an update about how this container is going and the reason why I've come in here is one because it's freezing outside at the moment It's nice and warm in here, but then also two I can actually talk because our breeding container So our first container that we properly set up that's really efficient at the moment um, It's just so so loud So this is actually a nice time just to talk in here without having too many crickets chirp I'll show you a little video about how loud it actually is in there right now So yeah, as you can see, it's super, super loud, but then, you know, in here it's nice and quiet because we've just, we've just got all these little tiny pinheads, as you can see, just here, look at them all. Incredible. All right, the first virus is actually, it was discovered in Australia, believe it or not. So there is a bit of history there and there are a couple of papers about it. It's called CRPV. I'll leave a link below with the paper, but then also um, if you just Google CRPV, cricket paralyzed virus, it will actually come up and you can read about it. There's just a little bit of information, but not a lot. Um, like most viruses for crickets, there isn't a lot of information, which is kind of annoying. So yeah, it, in summary, it's just a mRNA kind of mutation in the genome and it just wipes out 95% you know, of the colony because the crickets can't eat and because they're paralyzed and so be it, they're just done. So yeah, we haven't had it on the farm, we haven't seen anything like that, but you know, it is a bit of an issue that you do need to be aware of. <laughs> you know, we've been farming crickets for a while now, but we've had, you know, next to no crickets really have any problems with viruses. Um, the reason why I'm making this video is because I get a lot of photos like this, you can see on the screen now. Um, you know, this first photo, it looks like there's a bit of a mite problem and it looks like little blisters and they're coming up all over the tops of the crickets and I'd hate to see if this was like the whole bin that's actually full of these and you know, this next photo, you can actually see the crickets, like it almost looks like not so much the wings or the legs, but the actual skin or the exoskeleton is so red so bright red, um, yeah. Like I don't, I don't really know what those two diseases are because we haven't had any problems. And you know, talking to other cricket farmers and talking to other people that do farm insects, um, there's not a lot of information out there about viruses, which is super, super, super scary. And um, some of the other parts about it is one of the crickets, especially the one with the mites that you can see up here. That's the same breed of crickets that we have here on the farm. So I guess what I'm trying to say is like, we don't really know, but what we can do is run you through a bit of a process about what we do on the farm here with our cleaning process and also some of the things around our food and water 
that we might actually be avoiding some of these viruses because like I said no one actually knows what's going on with these crickets if you're on any of those social media pages where uh, like there's a cricket page on social, so it's called Cricket Farming, it's on Facebook and there's about 2,000 members on there and some of these photos have been put up there but no one can really tell you what's going on and how to avoid it. So I guess what I'm trying to do today is just to show you what we do fully um, with our cleaning process, the heat, the humidity, all that stuff and some of the thoughts that we've been having of why these cricket viruses might be an issue for some people and why we haven't had any virus issues on our farm. So yeah, I'm gonna run you through a few things now. All right, the first thing is, if you are a current cricket farmer and you have a little bit of a setup going already and you do have a few crickets that have been really healthy but then you are having a few viruses so you've decided to buy some more crickets in from somewhere, um, another farm, I recommend isolating those crickets for at least at least a month like let them grow out and actually see and produce some few eggs and see if those crickets are going to be healthy because viruses do take a little bit of a time like a little bit of time to develop in the cricket so if you do have a cricket farm and you order in more crickets make sure you isolate them that is the number one thought and we actually haven't ordered in any crickets from um, our first batch of crickets, which is nearly four years ago. And I know this is a, a lot of people say that we might have issues with this, but we haven't had any issues so far. And you can see by all the pinheads I just showed it in the video before, we're breeding like no tomorrow. Our population is really stable. But we actually only started with 30 crickets and I bought them from a company. Um, they're actually based up in Queensland called Pisces and I bought 30 from them, my very first cricket video you'll see on the YouTube channel and we've been breeding ever since and we haven't had any issues so if you do buy more crickets and you bring them into your farm make sure you isolate them and keep them away from your other crickets until you start producing a few more eggs. Alright the next thing is food so you remember this photo up here on the screen now with all the little mites on it now, um, we've, seen, we've seen on our farm when we do put food in the containers and um, also just because you would have seen at the start of this video, we do have a bit of a dry land farm where we get all that food from, like all that dry food. And you would see that there's just a lot of like little tiny mites um, and little insects that always get in the food. And if you don't store your food properly, then these mites are obviously gonna grow, they're gonna eat the food and they're just gonna run through all your container. So you would see there's a bit of a, uh, it's a it's a food topic video on our YouTube channel. I can leave the link below, but we do run through a full process about what we actually do for the food on the farm. And it's just simply like, we make sure it's all super clean and then we also store it. Um, I'll run over to the other container where we actually have our food being stored. So, you would see in previous videos, we have a cool room where we actually keep all our food nice and cold. Um, and that way we can just make sure that any parasites or you know little bugs or other insects that might be on the food then stays dormant and doesn't actually come and start breeding on the food when we're storing it. So, uh, if you see that here, this is where we've got a bit of a food and it's quite cold in here at the moment and we wouldn't normally store this here um, but because it's winter in Australia but you see this tub just here this has all got um, a dry grain food that we mix up and we just sticky tape it around the top so nothing nothing can actually get into this container um, and start growing and eating on the food so we keep all our food pretty separate um, which I think is a pretty key thing for making sure that you have clean food but yeah, if you if you are buying your food from other places, like I'd just probably check your food out and see if you can actually see any little mites or any little insects on that food. And if you do, don't use it or put it in the freezer, like do something with it to try and actually get rid of any mites and those little insects because definitely that could be an issue. Also on the topic of food, if you are feeding your crickets any fruit or veggies and uh, you're just getting that from the shops and it's a little bit old, it's been in the fridge, I just check to see if there's any mold starting to develop on that food because um, if you've watched any of the previous videos on this channel where I talk about mold or food or hydration or humidity, 
you'll notice that uh, mold is one of my favorite topics and I hate the stuff and I avoid it all the time. So obviously if you have any mold on your food, you want to remove that as well because you, it's like anything. Um, like if I was to feed you guys moldy food, you'd probably get sick too. And so the crickets are the same. If they're eating moldy food, they're going to be getting sick. They're, they're not super insects. Um, so just be on top of mold and the food and the way that you store the food and just have a look at it, check it out. It could be causing you guys some issues. The next one is breeding soil. So in this container, you can see these pinheads have already been born and all this um, coconut husk here that we actually use for our breeding soil is dry. That also can become an issue and we have noticed some of our coconut husk starting to develop mold on it. And if you do have any mold on that coconut husk, uh, get rid of it. It's no, you're no point trying to clean it or trying to isolate it, just throw it out. It's cheap, you can get more. And to be honest, if you have coconut husk and you have a bit of a garden, you can sprinkle it around your garden and use it as like fertilizer. Um, it also retains moisture really well, so plants love it. And, but yeah, here in the container, that stuff just, you know, like the containers are built for pretty much growing mold. They live in the perfect um, environment for developing mold. So get rid of your coconut husk if you do start to see any mold developing on it. I have been meaning to do another video on breeding soil because it is super, super important for making sure you get um, eggs, crickets breeding, and yeah, I'll, I'll just show you two photos that I think are pretty interesting. Bit of a teaser um, up here on the left and right. Yeah, the, the difference between these two soils and what you can actually see with the eggs, I think is pretty fascinating and can cause some issues. So that'll be another video. Um, but it's simply if there's too much water in your coconut husk or that it's too wet then it's going to grow too much mold and if it doesn't dry out in time for the crickets to be able to hatch then you're going to be running into some issues so that's probably going to be for another time because that's going to be quite a long video but making sure that things don't get moldy is super super important. The next thing I want to talk about is water so firstly with water what we do on the farm is we are lucky enough to have rainwater tanks just here. I know we have a river really close by, but we don't use any of that water. For our crickets, we use all fresh rainwater and that obviously comes off the top of these containers in the shed next door and it fills up one, this tank, but then two, the second tank just there. And that's all we do for fresh drinking water for the crickets. And then also, we, we only use that water for all the cleaning as well on the farm. So we're not going into the farm with dirty or used water or it's got some sort of chemical like chlorine because I know that some countries do put chlorine in their water. Um, yeah, it's all nice and clean, but then I'll head into the adult container now too to talk a little bit more about some of the water devices that we do use. Now, you would have seen these on a previous video, but you can already see that there's some feces. Uh, the crickets are drinking on here now, if my camera will focus for me, pretty please. So you would see that there's some feces um, and some waste products from the crickets on top of these water containers or these water feeders. You need to get rid of that. Um, that's obviously gonna cause more issues. If they're drinking from a dirty source, then obviously the crickets are going to get sick and it could develop further viruses and yeah you just you just don't know so be on top of cleaning use fresh water or just use clean water check out where your water source comes from because that could be causing issues the next one um, about water too is just here on the ground so even though we have cleaned all these walls they're nice and sparkly the other day um, you would see that there is still some water condensation starting to build up on the floor just there. And then if I head over here too, like this is actually quite, that's quite slippery. There is a bit of water there. But if you do have a very similar container set up or farm set up that we do, you would notice that there's actually some parts that you don't get to check out. And it's actually just behind the container here too. So it's pretty dark, but I'd be really, really careful about what you can't see in your container because I went through behind all these bins the other day and had to mop up all of this like excess water. So just 
just be really on top of what is actually around your cricket bins, not necessarily inside, but then also outside on the floor. Keeping this nice and clean, mopping up all the water, and obviously sweeping up any of the waste products is gonna be really, really important to keep this whole facility nice and clean and avoid those potential issues. Now, what do we actually do for cleaning the floors and um, making sure that the bins are nice and tidy? Um, people do ask us like what kind of cleaning chemicals we use. We try not to use too much um, when it comes to cleaning chemicals. We do use a little bit of bleach, but we only use that on like the really, really, really dirty areas or where there has been potential mold. So that can be like down this back corner where there is water starting to pull. So we will use a bit of bleach there because bleach will, they will kill crickets. Um, but only if the crickets actually come in contact with it. So we don't use any bleach inside these containers where the crickets are breeding. We only use food grade safety cleaning products. So if it's, um, if you don't have access to any of those, you can use things like lemon and water. Um, salt's a good thing. You know, just making sure that it can kill any bacteria, but anything that you can say I will not die if I clean my dishes with it in the house, then the crickets won't die in there. So yeah, that's what we do for cleaning chemicals. Um, hate that word. <laughs> so yeah, and then what we actually do with the bins in here as well, you can see underneath that water feeder, there is a bit of grain build up and you can see there's a bit of feces along here. We make sure that we tidy all that up as well. So we sweep all that stuff up. So. I'm slowly starting to build my way through the container, but I cleaned these ones yesterday. And yes, there is a bit of feces, but there's no, uh, nowhere near as much waste underneath these egg cartons. Like, if I was to head down here. Yeah, here's a good container, for example. See all that feces build up just at the back here? That is gonna be a problem. So obviously, if that gets wet, um, you'll really start to notice that <laughs> that will start to develop mold. And that's another um, point to just be aware of is if you do walk into your cricket farm one day and over time you'll start to notice it's got a bit of a certain uh, smell to it. It's not a bad smell, like if you're working with other types of animals, uh, like piggeries or sheep farms, like feeding pens, it can smell horrible, but crickets do smell a little bit but you will notice one day if there is some mold growing or if there has been water spilled in the container and it gets all over those feces, it will stink. It will stink, you'll notice it. You just gotta find it, you gotta clean it and get rid of it. Now it's time for my favorite topic, which is heat and humidity. You hear me mention this all the time on the farm if you've watched any of the previous videos, but that's because I believe it is the most important aspect when it comes to cricket farming to get right. And just to show you guys, you know, how important it is, and even in terms of like growth rate, um, bought this little device the other day. It's just a, like a laser, um, you can see it there. And it just records the temperature. Um, so, you know, you would have seen previously on the channel, we run our container at 28 degrees here on the gauge, and we have fans up here for airflow, split system. I've got a whole video on what we actually do for temperature, but, if the temperature or if the humidity, more so the humidity, not so much the heat, but if the humidity is too high, so we run our humidity between, it's around about 55, it depends on the day, it depends on how much water is actually in the container, it depends actually on also the outside environment as well because sometimes water does leak into the container, um, just through the corner and then also comes up through the floor sometimes. And then that will actually change how much humidity is in the container too. So. We run it between 55 and 70, and we found that the crickets really thoroughly enjoy that, and we haven't had any too, well, we haven't had any problems with population for the last year and a half, so that's been really good. But with this laser, you'll notice, so, if I point at the floor here. So guys, the um, camera was having a real hard time trying to focus, so, if I point this at the ground here, 17 degrees which is just crazy because we're running our container at 30 according to the actual meter up there. But 
then if I was to move it up here, so it's 20 degrees. So the difference now, this might not be 100% accurate when it comes to making sure that this temperature gauge is the exact same to what is actually coming out up here. But I do find that really interesting that there is, you know, a three or four degree difference. Like, so now it's saying 21 up here. <laughs> Um, you know, and then in each of the bins, we've got around about 21 as well, but then as soon as you get down lower, then drops down to 18 down here now, which, yeah, that's, that's a huge difference when it comes to breeding crickets. So, and that kind of explains why we have our top cricket bins up here growing a lot faster than the ones down the bottom. But anyway, long story short is if you have too much heat or humidity, then you're gonna be having a mold problem. So the things that you can do with that is you can actually turn down the humidity, get the water out of the environment. Um, and if you're having, still having issues after you've turned the humidity down, then I'd recommend trying to turn the humidity, or sorry, turn the heat down as well. But at the end of the day, if you're not on top of your cleaning processes and you're not getting rid of that mold, then I'd probably just start again and get rid of everything in your container and start from scratch and do a huge cleanup. <laughs> it's as simple as that. And for those wondering, if you do point this at the actual heating unit itself, it does say 30 degrees. So even though that um, it says 30 degrees on here, it doesn't actually necessarily mean that it's gonna be 30 degrees over the whole container. All right, also the egg cartons. Now, we get a lot of egg cartons from uh, local community members, but then also one of our um, <laughs> one of our mates, I reckon. You know, he's given us that many egg cartons in the, in the past, a little bit of a shout out. Glenview Poultry, um, we get a lot of egg cartons from him. So, um, of course, egg cartons, not necessarily they're dirty, but it's also uh, just key to keep on top of what actually comes inside your cricket farm and then also what leaves because anything that comes in that hasn't really been cleaned properly will have an issue with it. So these egg cartons are, are all clean, but the thing is something still might get inside of them because that's how we reckon we get a lot of our little spider outbreaks. There's a video on the channel about having spiders in the container. So yeah, just things like that, making sure what goes in the container is clean before entering. Um, and then also, the last thing is probably all our feces. Now this is all, this is actually only a couple of days of cleaning worth, but that's full of cricket, um, you know, frass. And these are 53 liter containers, I think they are. Yeah, 53 liters. So, you know, there's well over a hundred liters worth of feces just in these like bins from cleaning and making sure that everything is just nice and tidy in the container. All right, finally, the last thing is just other insects. I mentioned it with the spiders um, just before. Now, you gotta remember that you are breeding crickets and they thrive in this environment that you've got. So with the heat, the humidity, the food, the water, and that also means that other insects are gonna thrive as well. And this is just an example but you can see here, we get all these little flies um, within the farm and I've seen other farmers have this problem too. And when I say it's a problem, it's not a huge issue because we just put up these like little sticky repellent um, kind of, yeah, I'm not really sure what they are. They're just for catching like different flies and different things, but it's really, really good for just catching all those flies. But we do notice that there might be little, yeah, here's one. It's just sitting on the orange just there. Um, next to the cricket, that little black dot. So, yeah, we have these little fly things hanging around, but there's no adult crickets in this container, but we have actually seen in the past the adult crickets just end up eating those flies as well. <laughs> so, but we do use those sticky labels, um, which are really good for just catching flies and other little insects that might be in this environment as well. So just be on top of it. Um, it's not a huge issue, but yeah, just be on top of it. All right, that is everything for this video. Kind of like what I said at the start. Um, we are new to group farming. I know we've been doing it for a while and we've had some success, but we don't know it all. We're still learning and uh, everything that you guys in the community 
um, are providing support, feedback, questions, information about different little aspects of cricket farming. It's all super helpful. So thank you for everyone who has been supporting the channel. And yeah, like if you do have any questions about the viruses, uh, feel free to reach out and have a conversation. Or if you have seen something or you have seen something that works, let us know. Um, but yeah, that's just what we do on our farm that we think has an impact on pretty much not creating a virus or breeding a virus or making sure that the crickets are, you know, dying um, from something that we don't know what's happening. So yeah, really on top of the cleaning process, really on top of the mold, um, the food, the water, it's all super clean. Um, yeah, it's just, it's just how we go about it. It seems to work for us. Crickets are happy. Um, yeah, that's everything guys. So thank you once again and we'll see you in the next video. Bye.